Big Two Local Weather Authority forecast. We warn you first with Chief Meteorologist Chase Menendez. Well, good evening, everybody. Very quiet evening that we've got going on right now here. It looks like a still image here on the tower cam. As a matter of fact, things are quiet. Wind speed's not too bad. Most, most of the clouds have gotten out of the way. Thanks to the West Texas State Bank weather cam, we can keep a good eye on those conditions outside. Now, things have also cooled down a little bit since we got to this afternoon. 73 degrees currently for Odessa Midland and Wink. 74 for Pecos, so not too bad out there right now. I'd bring a light jacket with me if I were headed outside, but it is a little cooler than it was this afternoon. Temperatures picked up to 80. 88 degrees for a high temperature average for this time of year, 83. So again, a lot of extra heat. That heat it usually rises up. Warm air tends to rise up. The hotter the air, the faster that rising motion is. And that rising motion contributes to rain chances. That's why we had a couple of thunderstorms earlier today. We need a little bit of moisture. We need a little bit of warm air. Now, thankfully, West Texas, not nearly as bad as what we've got going on in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas. It looks like it is a very, very active day for the Midwest. But thanks for us here in West Texas, things have generously calmed down. We've got a little bit of thunderstorm activity earlier in the afternoon. Some very, very strong but isolated thunderstorm cells moving off to the north and east, capable of producing a lot of hail, a lot of rainfall, and some damaging winds earlier in the afternoon right near Big Spring. We also had another storm cell in the northern portion of our viewing area in Borden County. Again, capable of producing hail. That one actually spawned a tornado just outside of our viewing area. But we had another cell capable of producing uh, hail and a tornado warning right near Ira Ann. That one tracking off to the east, finally making its way out as it tracks towards Ozona. So we're not looking at any thunderstorms now, but we certainly did have a little bit of that earlier. Now, we've got a pretty similar setup for tomorrow as what we had for today. A little bit of humidity, a little bit of mugginess, a little bit of heat, all contributing to give us those thunderstorm cells that we had earlier. Notice where those storms were popping up. That's where we're looking at the highest dew points. Snyder at 65 degrees, 65 for Big Spring, and 66 for Dryden. That indicates well above average levels of moisture, but as we go on through the hours, that moisture is going to peel back off to the east. By tomorrow afternoon, we're looking much, much drier than we were today, but we still have some moisture out there. We still have some moisture just off to the east of our viewing area. If that decides not to push as far to the east, if that stays a little bit further to the west, then places like Big Spring, Big Lake, some of our eastern basin counties have a chance at some more thunderstorm potential for tomorrow. Isolated thunderstorms, just like we had today, because we've got a very similar setup with those above average dew points and temperatures all combining to give us those rain chances. Taking a look at the model, it shows a little bit of moisture flowing in from the east as we get to tomorrow morning. Maybe some isolated uh, shower cells developing in the early part of the day for places like Dryden and Terrell County. Maybe Big Lake looking at some light shower activity too. But once we get to the afternoon time, that's when everything starts to pick up. By around 4 p.m., this model placing those isolated thunderstorms just off to the east right around San Angelo. But there is a possibility that we could see some of those isolated thunderstorms in the easternmost edge of the basin. And the Storm Prediction Center agrees. That's why there's this marginal risk outlined in green just for our eastern edge and a little bit of the slight risk there overlapping with Big Lake and some of our eastern basin counties as well. Now, we're nowhere near the bullseye, but there is a possibility of some isolated storm cells. Most of the activity is going to be over Dallas and places like Arkansas. But again, here in West Texas, we do have a chance for some of those isolated storm cells to be kicking up for tomorrow afternoon. Now, overnight tonight, we're in the clear. I think we're done with that severe weather. Much, much calmer conditions, if not a little bit chilly. We'll drop down into the 60s here in the next hour or so, and that will stay in place for most of the overnight time. Our lows tomorrow morning dropping down into the 50s, but most of the evening will be spent in the 60s. And most of the afternoon tomorrow will be spent in the 90s. 91 is the high there. Lots of sunshine and again, a small chance for some isolated thunderstorm cells to pop up overhead. Now it looks like our next chance for severe weather is going to occur Thursday night into Friday morning. You got a 40% chance here in Odessa Midland on Thursday night. So a quick question for you, Chase. There was a tornado near Ira Ann today. Yes. Now, we know what a tornado watch is, but what constitutes a tornado warning? What should, what should people know? Well, a tornado watch means watch out. We, we haven't seen a confirmed tornado just yet, but a warning occurs when there's either a spotter uh, spotting a tornado on the ground or a radar signature of that tornado in the radar. So a warning means uh, that is on the ground. A warning means get shelter, hide away from that tornado. Uh, usually the sirens will sound by then. Wow. Thanks All right, Chase. Chase. All right, Thank you. Thanks. Hopefully we don't have to.